Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Python for Beginners and a few videos have already been uploaded and in this particular playlist we are targeting to upload short videos so that you can learn from the short video, you can practice about whatever you have learned and then you can shift to the next video. So with this idea, we are not extending our videos and we are not inputting more content in a particular video. However, if you watch the entire playlist, then you'll be getting all the contents that you need in order to strengthen your basics in Python. So today we'll be working with some shorting techniques. Suppose you have a you have an array and you do you want to do some shorting like you want to generate some logic according to that logic you want to identify the element so let's get started suppose i define a particular variable so before that i should import numpy as np as i have already mentioned we are working with numpy so this should be the initial line and then you should run it. It will take some time for the connection because this is working on a server, Google server. So now we define an array, say a np.array. So we'll be defining a two dimensional array. So you know, after that you have to give a parenthesis and then a box bracket within box bracket you can actually insert the elements if it is an one dimensional array then you can gradually insert the elements if it is a two dimensional then inside the box bracket again we put another box bracket and for simplicity serial wise we start inputting the data say up to six in the first row and then a comma and we are say putting 7 8 9 10 11 12 then another row let us insert say 13 14 15 16 17 18 so this is the array Two dimensional array we have defined and let us now print it say print a if you make a comment print a it will give your a so you can see this is the array we have created now suppose if you are curious to know how many elements are there those are less than 13 just randomly i am thinking so for that what you can do you can print those elements so put a comment print will be printing a but some selective elements in a and that logic will be giving here so if a less than 13 then only print so if you run it you can see it is printing up to 1 to 12 so the important thing is it was a kind of two dimensional array but now we are shorting the elements based on some logical expressions and from this three dimensions two dimensional array it is just taking the elements which are logically true so in a from a multi-dimensional array you can you can do this logical expressions in order to short your elements so there could be multiple other things all are similar but as this is a beginners level course so we are just working on it say i want to know what are the elements which is greater than say 4 or equal to 4 so what we can write is we can again write print and here the logic will be what here the logic will be so we write a within box bracket what we can write is we can write the expression uh, one minute yeah so the expression will be a greater say we want to print the elements which are greater or equal to 5 so we put this expression and we print it so initially it was only less than 13 
so it was printing up to 12 but now the expression is either it is equal to 5 or it is greater than 5 so it is printing 5 also and all other elements which is greater than 5 so this is a kind of logical expression now I want to know how many even numbers are there so for that also we can again put another logical expression so mind it uh, whenever I am working with any of the command or expressions so you should learn about that usage of that particular expression as well like now we'll be using modular operation so we want what do we want we want basically the even numbers so the even numbers are those which which is divisible by 2 so what I tell is a percent 2 that should be equal to 0 what does it mean so this is an operator which divide which gives you the remainder Suppose you are you have an element say 8 and you are dividing 8 by 2 and you are looking at the remainder. So if you divide 8 by 2 there will be no remainder so it will be 0. So this statement is true for 8 but what if we divide 9 by 2 then we get a remainder 1. So now the remainder is 1 not equal to 0, 0. so the statement is false. So by checking this it will print all the even numbers so let us just click on it we have already clicked so you can see it is giving you the even numbers now if you want to put the odd numbers then what you need to do so the expression will have a remainder 1 now you can see all the odd numbers now you may have two logical expressions and you want to club this two. Suppose we want another logical expression. Say we are printing something where two logical expressions will be valid. Say the first logical expression we can put inside another bracket. Say if a greater than say 5. Arbitrarily I am taking and so we are putting two logical expression and that is separated by and so again a bracket in this bracket now we want to tell it should be more than 5 but less than 30 so I want to basically print the number which is in between 5 and 13 so let us just run it so you can see it is printing so this is a kind of two logical expressions clubbing in together so this is also very useful sometimes what we do we, we use another operator that is or this is and sometimes we use or so let us just show you how to use that so instead of that what you need to put is you need to put this or symbol now if it is say greater than 5 or equal to 5 or we can say it should be greater than 5 and say modular of 2 equal to 0 that means it should be even and more than 5 so even or more than 5 because this is not AND operator this is the OR operator so it will be printing if it is greater than 5 or it is a even number so let us see it you can see this is getting printed because this is a, an even number also all, all these three are even numbers why 7 is getting printed because this is more than 5 again 8 is coming because of this logic and the 9 is coming because of this logic now you see if you instead of or if I put and here then both the conditions must be satisfied in order to get a number printed so you can see 6 is an even number and also greater than 5 that is why it is getting printed but we don't print 2 or 4 because it is not greater than 5 so in your code many times you need to use this kind of logical expression suppose you have solved some numerical calculations and you have a large number of data and you want to look at some specific 
things like we have given by these logical expressions in those cases this kind of syntax and this kind of commands will be very much useful sometimes uh, we, uh, instead of printing number we also print logical expressions so whether it is uh, false or not suppose uh, we define a variable say c in c what we define a logical expression say a greater than say 9 or let us put or a equal to 9 so this is a kind of expression that we have put in 5 uh, in c and now we print c so let's see what happens you can see it is printing the i mean the idea whether it is false or true so let us check it so initially what it is looking at it is false because it is neither greater than 9 or less or equal to 9 so it is false up to this but here it is true because here it is getting the number 10 you can see we have already printed it yeah here it is number 10 so at number 10 this statement is being true and that's why from here it is printing true you can also print say for and operator and i was telling you about the modular operator say modular 2 equal to say 0 so it is showing those are true so any true let us take suppose this one why it is true what is the number let us see initially so this is 12 okay so why it is true for 12 so what we are trying to see is whether it is greater than 9 or not so 12 is greater than 9 and then we want to see whether it is modular of 2 or not yeah it is modular of 2 that's why this is true for here it is also true for 10 because 10 is more than 9 and it is again even so this is true here and alternatingly it is coming true true so for all the cases those conditions are satisfied so these things i guess this is these things are helpful there are many other applications of numpy however whatever we have discussed till this point that will be sufficient for getting started and once you get started then we will be dealing with some applications in those applications we will again go back and learn some basics so this way your learning should be continuing so today i stop here from the upcoming classes i will be talking about plotting because here we have already talked about the arrays how to handle arrays how to define two dimensional three dimensional and one dimensional arrays we have talked about shorting we have talked about slicing and all so in the next class we'll be more focusing on the plotting so we'll be spending few classes on plotting and then we'll start our numerical calculations and gradually we'll be moving towards the intermediate level and then in the advanced level we'll be solving engineering problems so the people who are from engineering background for them that advanced level course with python will be helpful